this intel story it gets weirder and weirder. Okay, you got 32, you got 32 class actions filed against Intel. And what's, what, what it's about, in, in, in addition to that, there's a derivative suit that right. I'd like to talk the about. Uh, it, yeah, so here you got, you've got security flaws. Talk about the story, lay it out a little bit. The, uh, the security flaws are in the chips, which is in, in every computer known to mankind. I mean, I don't care what you own, whether it's Intel, advanced micro devices, ARM holding, every one of those contains these chips. And these chips are a bandwidth or a bridge to, for hackers to come in and get information out of your computer. So then Intel says, well, I got to fix. So it's, they put a kind of a bandage over the, yeah. uh, over the bridge so hackers can get in and steal the information. But that slows down the computer. Well, if you just spent a couple grand on a computer, is it the, is it significant? Oh yeah, it's yeah. slow. It slows okay. the whole thing down enough right. to warrant you know 32 suits. So you buy a computer, it slows it down. You have people getting their information hacked, and uh, so you have, as you mentioned, you have 32 lawsuits that fit into three categories. So one is I bought I bought my computer, and it's significantly slower with the fix than what what was advertised. I didn't get what you sold me. That's one. Number two is the derivative suit, which the derivative suit is the company essentially suing the officers and directors. Stockholders. Right, so it's a it's a derivative with the company yeah, or stockholders suing the, the officers and, or directors and the for third. making terrible business decisions. And the third one is a security suit, but I, what I love, which means that that they knew about it, the company knew about it, didn't disclose it, so people that bought stock paid inflated. But what? here's what I love. Yeah. The, C, the CEO, um, I'm not going to pronounce his last name correctly. Brian uh, uh, Kresnich. Yeah. Uh, he sold 889,000 shares <laughs> on November as part of his plan. He made 39 million dollars oh, yeah. from selling his securities. While he knows this he, is he all underway. Yeah, he knew as of July 27th, okay. month so before. So here, Big Brian Kresnich, he says, "Wow, I got to keep this quiet. While I keep it quiet, I'm going to go ahead and sell stock, and I'm." I'm going to make $39 million. Well, okay, who got hit? To understand, you handle derivative suits. You've handled them for years. A derivative suit is when the shareholder says that the conduct of management is so bad or it's so corrupt. You've ruined my... You've ruined the value of my, my stock, stock, right? Yeah. Okay. So what could have... So this guy knows that his, his stock is going to tank if he doesn't secretly go do this as quickly as he can. And if this information gets out, then he's not going to make $39 this, this million. This whole compensation system is what's wrong with, with Wall Street and corporate America. We pay our CEOs in large part. Most of their compensation comes from options and stocks, which means I'm going to give you a uh, stock that you can execute and buy a year or two down the line. And right. the thought is their goal is align with the company, get the stock price up. Well, what it really ends up is at any means possible, drive the stock price up as much as humanly and possible. Sell. Keep the bad news quiet yeah. while I sell my, my uh, exercise my options and then liquidate. So what he's done is he's and he's saying, oh, this is just part of a regular <laughs> regular. Well, he said plan. it was coincidence. No, I mean, it was just free. a coincidence. But you know I didn't what? Know if you know all. something bad's coming, <laughs> dude, you can't sell your. I mean, well, thirty nine million dollars, which is more money than ninety nine point nine nine percent of the population is ever going to dream about yeah. making in a lifetime. He sold. In one liquidation and pocketed, all the while knowing that his shareholders were about to get crushed, and he sold it. Well, I, you know, the, the interesting thing about the point that you just made, and, and I, this is so this is so important. People don't understand that si that used to be, the CEO of a company would be with that company sometimes 20, 25 years. Okay, now the new MBA idea is get out of MBA school and get into what they call the MBA network, the CEO network. Well, that means they're moving from one company to another within a period most of the time, anywhere between three, five years at the most. Okay, so what happens? What This thing Peter just talked about. They build in this process. Now, let's talk about a drug company, for example. A drug company ends up making what they call, they, they create a cash cow. That's a drug that they're going to sell to everybody. It's going to make a lot of money. But the CEO is already seeing the edge of a crisis. He's seeing that, oh, yeah, we're selling a lot of this drug, but the problem is we know that it has potential to kill people, right? So what he does is he maximizes all of his interest in that company, like this cat did, made $39 million. He does that before 
the, the, the stories out there that this drug has the ability to shut down your kidneys or this drug has the ability to, to shut down your liver. He gets to see that information early mm -hmm. on. It's, it's insider information, but more importantly, what he does is he knows he's moving through the company. By, we, we've actually seen cases where the CEO does what they call this, this quick sale. He, know, he, has a drug, he has a drug that's going to kill people. Right. He knows it's going to kill people. His scientists are going to tell him it's, it's going to kill people. So what he does is he's already looking for the second job during the time that he sells the stock so while the cash cow drug is making so much money. It happens every single day. There's very few cases I've handled, Peter, where I haven't seen this happen. It, it does. It, it, in the culture, to me, is what the problem, if you push it back, because obviously the sale of the stock is the problem, is part of the problem, but if you push it back, there's absolutely zero incentive to stop the drug that they know has a high probability of hurting people. Maybe they know what they told the FDA is inaccurate. Maybe they get updated information. And the whole time they're thinking, oh, I got to keep this on the download right. because I've got $150 million in options. And why that goes we, to what you were saying. Yeah, the why system. do we continue to pay our, yeah. our CEOs based on these options down the line, knowing that if they keep the information down, they, they, they I mean, perpetrate fraud? I mean, that, that's what it is at the end of the day. It promotes fraud, doesn't it? It does. It, it's a whole system that says... I need to maximize potential now, not long-term value, yeah. which is what it was designed, short-term quick profits, which also, if you compare that to Wall Street and all the tr crazy, tr crazy trading scandals we have, everybody knows that I'm going to take home and put in my pocket short-term profit right. swings from crazy risk. The shareholders take the risk, I get they, the they reward. Even have a they even have a term for it, and the term is big risk, quick profits. Absolutely. I mean, they've, we actually see it in memos where there's, there's dialogue going between management and the CEO and say, well, you know, to make big profits, we got to take some quick risks sometimes. And, of course, the and risk then they pass the it on. Then they pass it on to the shareholders, yeah. and then the, maybe they get caught. The company gets fined. They and don't they, pay any money. They just go to the, the next CEO, job. The CEO at the same time has insurance for what he's done. He's committed a crime. He has killed people with a dangerous pharmaceutical that he knows is dangerous. He's maximized his income while that's happening, and he's out of the way. He's moved. He's moved on to the. He, he's moved from Pfizer to Merck, or from Merck to uh, you know Eli Lilly. He's. They're always moving. And if you take a look at it, you'll be amazed at how ugly this process your is. Your storyline that you've been you've been beating this drum for a long time. If you would just hold one or two of these guys accountable, put a few just people doing the perp walk. They thinking twice. Put it's handcuffs just, on just these Just freaks. once or twice, and j you would see an end to this. But instead, yeah. you see this pattern repeated over and over and over in all kinds of different industries. I'm Mike Papantonio here with Peter Mouget. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on Ring of Fire.